Okay, welcome to the clean call. Um, and um, before we get started, since as uh, Jim mentioned, we are a small group. So um, uh, first I'll ask anybody who is new to introduce themselves. Nobody well, I can do a quick, just hello for the new folks too. Um, I'm Katie Boyd and I'm the clean program manager and I also otherwise work at Ceres Education Outreach doing educational research and evaluation on some of our other projects, so. Okay, thanks Katie. Anybody, uh, so, um, well you can either uh, just speak up and introduce yourself and uh, you know everybody here who's on the call, a lot of people are regulars, but there are a few people who aren't. Uh, so uh, why don't we go around or you can, uh, I, I see that um, some people have put it into the chat. Okay, well I'll introduce myself. I'm Tamara Ledley. Most of you know me. I uh, was the original chair of the Clean Network and am now involved in uh, various activities teaching global climate change at a university, but also in some teacher professional development programs and, um, and just a, a STEM education consultant, mostly around climate change and also involved in the Blue Hill Observatory and Science Center. Okay, so are there any announcements? Um, <clears throat> Jen, do you wanna... Um... Maybe I'll just share our link to our A session from last week. Oh, yeah. um, do you want to talk about it while I find the link? Sure. Um, so uh, Deb and uh, Kristen Poppleton, who's a co-chair for the Clean Leadership Board, and Azati Citron, who um, I think has attended a few clean calls, but also is on the uh, ECOS um, uh, core team. Um, we presented at the UN Climate Dialogues last week, and you you may have missed it because we had, um, it was 2.30 uh, a.m. East Coast time, and then you can sort of work backwards across um, across the country. Deb was, Deb was, had the best slot of, I think, uh, 11, 1130, 12.30. 12.30. 12.30. Um, so she stayed up. The rest of us tried to sleep and get up. Anyway, so but it was exciting. We had a one hour slot to talk about um, basically operate, ex talking about ACE and also uh, providing examples from our programs and our work and others work around what ACE looks like, action for climate empowerment, what that looks like um, on the ground, on the ground, essentially. So um, we have, there's a recording of the session. There's a link with a whole pile of resources. Um, we had a lot of great research. Um, Deb was our fearless leader in pulling a lot of this together and we're grateful to her. Um, but it was, it was a really, I was so honored to be included in that opportunity. And uh, we're maybe at some point gonna write a paper about it, but um, cause we've got a lot, we've got all the work done. We've got all the work pretty much done. We just have to write it. Um, so. Deb, do you want to add anything? No, nope, that's great. Okay, great. Okay, thanks, Jen and Deb. Anybody else have announcements? I, I mean, this, this is a semi-announcement, but these 17-hour day AGU meetings, it's like, good God, they're amazing. So that, an, announcing, I don't know if I'm going to survive in, in a good way. They're amazing. Yeah. Well, our, our discussion today is going to focus mostly around AGU, unless there's topics other people want to talk about. But yes, that's it's definitely an issue. <laughs> okay, well, why don't we just get into our conversation for today. It was suggested that we talk about the AGU meeting. Have people had the opportunity to attend sessions and you have any, um, and want to offer any perspectives or insights into what you heard or learned? Thank you. Um, I will also just really quick sort of part announcement, part coming into this AGU discussion. I was just gonna put in the chat here. Um, this first document is the document we put together with a lot of relevant sessions around climate education stuff, um, including the clean 
um, organized sessions are highlighted in that document. And then I've also started, um, this was a request from some folks in the last clean call. So I wanted to especially put this out here. This is a document for presentations specifically, if you have uh, relevant posters or oral presentations or e-lightning presentations that you are doing. Um, this is a document where we can put the individual presentations and links to them. So um, just for everyone, those are kind of the clean coordination at AGU as far as I'm aware <laughs> what's going on at AGU. So just so folks know and just looking at that I know a lot of I think for me at least a lot of things I was interested in are coming up like later like like my week is busier next week despite this being the week that was blocked off for AGU for me you know like for how long now. <laughs> so it's mm -hmm. like, anyways I haven't actually attended I attended a the presidential forum yesterday with Leland um, Melvin. That was really good. I really uh, appreciated it and enjoyed that. Um, but not too much to report on it. I just thought it was a nice, interesting talk and sort of a good look at, you know, STEM education and diversify, you know, this idea of making it inclusive and bringing um, other folks in and that, you know, he talked about his, his journey through that. Um, so yeah, I got, I really enjoyed that, but that's the only thing I've done so far. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I guess, so I attended two of the named lectures yesterday, the Steven Schneider lecture, Michael Mann's talk. Um, and then I attended the Global Environmental, Ch oh, it was the Bert Boleyn lecture. I guess it's sponsored by the Global Environmental Change Group. And that was Ben Santer. And that was, that was pretty interesting because he talked about, he was one of the lead authors for the IPCC, I think he said in 2007. Um, and what was interesting is basically he talked about, <coughs> he not only talked about, but he gave um, according to his notes, he said that these were the comments. I mean, basically, it was like almost a transcript of the conversations during the negotiations for the executive summary for policymakers. So this is the document. So the IPCC report is a report by scientists, but then the executive summary for policymakers has to be agreed to not only by the scientists, Job, by uh, the representatives, the political representatives from each of the countries. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it was really interesting to see the back and forth um, with, um, I think it was the, fir the first group that objected, I mean, and, and the, the language, I mean, they were arguing about different words where in normal conversation, these words would mean almost the same thing. Bring back lunch um, if that would be helpful. And so, uh, so that was really, really interesting to hear that back and forth. I think it was the Kenyan delegate who initially um, objected to the language about their, it was really around the comments of being their a discernible human impact on um, producing climate change um, and how that was going to be actually stated that was in an agreeable form to 96 nations or 196 nations. Anyway, so that was that was really interesting, and then to, um, earlier today I attended the education section, business and social meeting. I guess they were reception. I guess in a normal situation, the business meeting would be with food and wine, and there was obviously none of that. Um, and it was at eleven o'clock in the morning Eastern time, so not too many people had wine. Um, but. Um, uh, it was a relatively small group. So if, for those of you who don't know, the education section is really new. It's only two years old. Um, uh, at the time that we first started having our climate literacy sessions, there was no education section. I served for three years as the chair of education on the fall meeting planning committee, but unlike the other sections, which send somebody from their section to be the chair, I was appointed the chair for, by Pranati Asher, who's the director of education at AGU, because there was no section to elect anybody. Um, anyway, so, but I, we got into an interesting conversation about how the education section, so the, 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 current, the current president of the section and the president elect, the person who will be president in a few days, I guess, um, 
when I told them that I was the one that initially coordinated the AG sessions, they said they, it was really glad that I had informed them of how that had happened. They never could understand how the climate literacy community was so organized. Um, and so that kind of kicked off a, a, a conversation about how the education section could promote that for other groups too, to identify somebody to coordinate a, a, you know, in a particular topical area that's relevant to geoscience education, not necessarily climate change, but that they could try to focus their sessions anyway. So, so that was an interesting conversation, but it just shows that the clean network is way ahead of our time and we're helping others move forward in being more effective. So anyway, so that was really good. So that's all I've been to so far. If I can just add one thing um, to what Tamara is saying around um, the policy brief for, or the IPCC briefs for policymakers. Mm -hmm. um, it is, it's so interesting to me as I sort of enter in different international spaces and national spaces around the way in which we come to collaborative statements on policy and organizations or the way in which we create policy briefs that move across spaces and communities because this issue of how language is perceived in different contexts and how ideas are perceived in different contexts really becomes much more profound about how scientists are fundamentally involved in the cultural production of how we think about climate change and what we can do about it. Because like what we can and can't say in different places and how we say it helps the message be heard or not. And so it, it's just an interesting um, pool of things to think about as folks are going forward in their work. And Ed Maybeck's work on climate communications has been some of the greatest like reading in that space to really think about. Uh, Tamara, if I, I'll go ahead a little bit. Sure, go ahead. Um, so let's see, I guess, and, uh, but partly, you know, largely for myself, but also for the sake of the community, um, I've made a point of really getting to know the different types of sessions and what's going on at AGU. So, I mean, there's both going in specifically, this is who I want to see, but let's see, let's also see what they're like. And one in particular, so Katie, I'm, I'm just going to keep saying it, you're just looking out for us so well, right? I mean, the thing of the late night Q&A sessions. So I made a point of going to the first of those, okay? Now, the ones I went to may not be representative of what will happen with us. They may not be, but there's probably something to be said by these. These are scientific ones. Um, they are definitely late night. They're, uh, they, one is they don't have the attendee T list. You don't have the participants. You don't really know who's there, but the sign was that there wasn't a lot of people showing up. Um, the uh, they'd have, they'd do the presentations and most of the people weren't getting any questions. Okay, so it was to the point where I kind of felt sorry for them and and I was kind of a little over my head of the science they were getting into. I know somewhat but not enough. But I'd ask kind of a layman's question or an educator's question and they just loved it because somebody was asking a question. Um, and and I mean you're right on the money of having a, a daytime alternate that goes on with it. They just did. I mean, I, I've been very impressed by a lot of things with AGU, but those late night Q&As, at least the ones I've seen, are very challenging. And um, another one, I, just by the way, maybe this doesn't go to other people. We, 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 you know, we have all these students at AGU and we're saying, well, they're presenters. Can't they be in? And the, But I'm realizing there's always one person who does those slides. They don't there's not a place to have other people. So that's one thing I just learned also looking at it. It was always, I mean, in fact, I, I would, I wrote a question to the second author in one of them and they didn't know what to do with it. She wasn't there. There was no way to, to pose a question to her. It was just the person who's, who's ever the listed uh, slideshow is at least the, that they anticipate that's the only person who's going to be there. Okay. There's more, but I'm, I rattled on enough. So with those late night sessions, what time was it? Well, you're in California, right? Yeah, so for us it's like seven or eight. It's okay, but for East Coast it gets to be eleven. It gets to be one. It gets to be. You're saying it's Tuesday. Well, it's actually Wednesday at one in the morning. You know, what I mean, it's yeah, crazy. no, I, yeah, really I, crazy. I, one I, of I, my employees is presenting in a session like that tonight, and she normally goes to bed at eight p.m. So, it's a bit of a challenge. Yes, we yeah, have. We when, have when, we, when we had the ESIP meeting, um, we we wanted to connect with the community that's part of ESIP in Australia. And that meant that we had to have sessions that went, this wasn't too bad for us. It went until 
seven o'clock at night, which I think is 7 a.m. there. Um, and so, but in even going that late, it's just, it, it is difficult. But so these, I don't, uh, I don't know how they're, I feel like it's, I know that they may wanted to make this attempt to be inclusive of all time zones, but it's a bit much. I think they, I don't know, I'm going to be honest, I've been looking through the schedule even just in other sections because education gets kind of screwed with bad times every year at AGU. And so I was looking even just in my old such section of atmospheric science and like I still saw most of the times for the actual Q&A sessions being at like five six in the morning and then like seven eight at night or later you know like there were some more they had more things during the day that we had but I just still feel like I saw majority of things that are just not in good time zones and I actually wonder if some of it is I don't know, trying to accommodate folks who are also trying to work and do AGU or something like that, which like to me, when I'm trying to work and do AGU, you're just causing more time for me to like be yeah, engaged that with was it. My impression was that it seemed to be like, let's make sure you can have a work day and AGU. <laughs> which is okay, to me like not good. Day. Yeah, it's too much. So what do, you, what, do people, they, what do people think about the length, the December 1st to 17th? It's too long also. I, I'm struggling to engage with it. I'm just not engaging. I'm just, I mean, I'm yeah, just- that's yeah, me too. I'm sure I've, just picked, I've just picked our sessions and some of the named lectures really and the education yeah. business meeting. I wanna see what was going on there, but I can tell you, we did a very rigorous evaluation of the summer ESIP meeting, which they did run for two weeks. They were- they, the, each of the two weeks, the Tuesday through Thursday was the main part, but then there were other satellite things happening the rest of the time. And the evaluation came back that it was just too long. And so this meeting and then the winter is going to be three and a half days. It was originally going to be three days, but they did have to extend it to the half. I'd like um, to rephrase what I'm doing. I am very selectively cherry picking. <laughs> I am engaging, but, um, you know, this is a real challenge because I find myself already burnt out on virtual meetings here in December because I've been doing them since April mm -hmm. and I have to dig deep and save energy for AMS annual, which we are absolutely in the throes of preparing for planning, uploading training sessions for session chairs and presenters. Um, on the bright side, I can say that AMS is really focusing down to a much tighter window, short days, and almost everything that's live is either powerhouse panels and invited talks or interactive sessions. Are so you I going with the, the long extended days or is it, is it focused on U.S. time zones? More focused in U.S. time zones with reasonable start and end times and mostly interactive stuff. So it'll be for anyone that gets completely burned out on AGU, but is also in, uh, participating in the AMS annual meeting, it will be a different experience. Smaller audience, obviously, but not small. Yeah. Um, I'm just oh, gonna throw out there too, that that was part, part of the reason also, and I'll just mention this again, I put it in an email and I mentioned it one of the last couple weeks as well, but we um, are planning to, or we have this Zoom room is, you know, for clean, this is here for the clean calls and we have this account through CU Boulder. So um, this is open for folks um, to do things with. Um, so for example, our, my two sessions that I'm convening, um, well, the two oral sessions I'm convening for clean for climate literacy stuff this year are Friday night. And Jim was saying like, yeah, we have one from, I think it's like seven to eight my time. And the other one's like 10 to 11.30 my time or nine to 10.30 my time, something like that. So it does end up at like something like one, two in the morning for East Coast folks for the end of it. And so I did really one, like I really struggled with having these Q and A's so late on a Friday night and like, I didn't think anybody was going to show up. And so um, that was part of, I've scheduled for Thursday, um, the following week, next next Thursday, the 17th, um, I have the Zoom, the clean Zoom room I'm going to use to open up and just have more of discussion for my session and then allow folks who maybe couldn't join or whatever for the actual Q&A to be able to talk about their work or ask questions or whatever. But then I'm also struggling with the whole like, 
Friday night sucks and I don't want to like force people to do that, but then we kind of have to do within the AGU system. So then this is just like an extra time commitment for me and my presenters. So it's like trying to give them time and opportunity and space outside of AGU, but then also try not well, to like other people, have all these Katie, time will other, commitments. Will so. other people be able to come? I, I mean, that, that it's the audience too that, um, I mean, I, I applaud you trying to enable more conversation, but will there be other people there? Or is it just the intent is to have the authors talk to each other? No, I, I want, I mean, I'm hoping other people will join us. I, I don't know. That's my problem. I can't guarantee that. I have no idea. But you, I would you, guess you Thursday can't, you morning can't tell would be... people that may come to that session that you're going to have this extra session. There's no yeah, other than right. if they show up the first, you know, at the late night session. Right. So I've been advertising it with some of the other ways I've been advertising our sessions through email lists and things like right. that. I, I stick it in there and I'm mentioning it and I'm telling people and it's on this document I posted and things like that. So yeah, I'm having to advertise it myself and I don't know if that's going to be successful. Yeah, I, 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 I'm interested to see how it plays out I, uh, because I think that I, I think it's really difficult because the other part of it is that I mean, even in the years that AGU was in Boston, which meant that I did not have to travel anywhere. The fact that I was at home meant that I, my home responsibilities continued. And so that's true now for everybody, everybody's at home. And so it's harder to ignore all of those responsibilities if you're physically there. Um, whereas if you travel off to San Francisco for a week, everybody knows you're out of, you can't help them for a week. Um, Throwing in on some, some thoughts on the um, on Katie uh, for what Katie is offering with Clean. So this is one of Katie. I held off on emailing you about this um, in part because I, I figured by you know it's a chance to actually kind of chat a little bit and this hopefully be a conversation that is interesting to other people, not not just me reading our stuff. Is um, the little school people and us in California? We are very interested in taking you up on that, but want to make sure we're being uh, not greedy. And and doing it right, so it'd be like, for instance, would there be a question of scheduling? Whether there would be a doodle or something? I mean, we're look. We would love to have one this week and one next week. I mean, they're thinking about that. Is um, we can only have so many kids register. We we could, we could have as many kids as want to be on this call. And people like Joe, I mean, there's people across the country. By the way, just a quick shout out to Joe Whitty. I mean, he is. Joe, if I'm getting it right here, I mean, you're one of NASA's outreach people on climate education. He's a very important person for us all. Um, and it, by the way, he's not chiming in, so I think we have a mic problem. But um, believe me, when Mike gets talking, uh, you want to hear it. <laughs> it's really good. If, but, I mean, you know, I don't believe Joe is um, registered at, at AGU, but it's a way we can include people coming in and, um, and, and doing that. So, I mean, it's, I mean, if that's okay with you, Katie, I would – you know, we, I, I would, but again, I don't want to be greedy with the time, but we could definitely do some, some times within that and get the publicity out to those that we're talking with to come in. Now, one of the reasons I like doing it through clean and not, we could do it through a low Zoom call. We could just easily do that is, hey, we're promoting the community, you know, getting the word out that clean is making all this possible. Come and look at this. Look at the other people in the schedule. Look at our sessions, all of our sessions. You know, I mean, clean has to be greatly commended. We, we would not be doing this without Katie and clean. And so to have it on the, the clean Zoom call is just the right thing to do first, as far as I'm concerned, as long as we're not. <laughs> as long as we're not uh, going too far with it and, and so on. So that that's something we're really excited about um, to do that. And again, again, it's also that, you know, looking to promote what we're doing. That's that's the thing I'm saying. I want to tie it in also with the thing of, you know, there's a thing of we want to give feedback to AGU. I might have a little more balance, but this is me that I, I can live with the 17 days and the 17 hours, but that's I'm crazy, right? I'm a retired engineer. This is stuff I do. You know, this is what I do, right? I get it that other people don't have it, so I, I'm fine with that feedback. But then there's also the part that we're just – it is what it is, right? I mean, we can give feedback to AGU, but AGU 2020 is what it is. And to me, there is the thing of the, uh, the, the oral sessions that we have, at least in particular. They do have a tremendously good uh, uh, characteristic is that people can watch the videos anytime. So if we get the word out – 
we can tell people whatever you want. You in the midnight, two o'clock in the morning, three, you know, anytime you want, come and watch our videos, and they're there all 17 days. A lot of the other sessions don't have that, and that's, I mean, so it's to kind of play up our strength, is what I have the thing. But but then of course to do it in a way that that it's promoting the whole community and not just our individual subsessions. That's my two cents. Um, Jim, I'll just mention that, yeah, I have not received any responses or any other interest in using the clean. So yes, if I was worried about scheduling stuff, then um, we can talk about a way to sort of set up a way to do that, you know, doodle or whatever. But considering I haven't had anyone else request it, um, I'm not going to worry about that until it becomes an issue. So um, if you want to schedule something and use the clean Zoom room, it is open and available for the most part. The only thing that's currently scheduled is for next Tuesday, the clean call. And then Thursday, my discussion session is um, happening from um, whatever, you know, whatever time zone you're in, it's in that document, as I mentioned, but it's nine to 10 a.m. Pacific time. So if that helps. Great, thank you. Expect an email by tomorrow morning. We, we've got, I've got the schedule from Lowell when they can do it. But uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Katie. Good points, James. Thank you, Jim. Uh, I've got a question for everyone. Um, what are the rules for our videos that we've made if we had an oral talk? So we have these 15 minute videos. Can they be shared outside of AGU once AGU is done? How do we manage doing that? I know I'm captioning my video, but the captions have to come afterwards. I didn't have time to get everything captioned uh, to make it accessible. So I'm doing that after the fact and I've made a notes sheet so that people can get to the notes and then click on a link to get to the captioned video. And I want that to be available, um, especially since I have an undergraduate student as a co-author. Or, or do you, I actually can't answer your question. I'm sorry, I don't really know. But I, one question I have, and maybe somebody does know, is will these all will all the sessions, the videos, be available to anybody, well at least AGU members after the meeting is over, even if they didn't register for the meeting? I mean, so I don't know what the availability AGU is planning. I was wondering if anybody else knew. Um, I'm not positive, but from the things I've read, I don't think so. Um, the, the things that I've read have sort of said that these videos are belong to AGU and that we shouldn't otherwise share them actually, and that um, they won't be sharing them with folks who didn't register for the meeting. I anybody anyways. who did register could see them or do you know? Yeah, so if you registered, you can continue to watch them after the fact, they'll be available mm -hmm. after the meeting as well. So you can continue to watch them. My group, we've talked a little bit about this, like we'd like to have our talks available to folks as well. So we've like, there was some talk in our group of trying to put them into a Google Drive and like post them somewhere on our website. And that's when somebody was like, AGU says you can't do that. So I'm not sure what we're gonna do um, about that whether we're going to flaunt the rules or, or or stick with them. But yeah, according to EGU, that you're not really supposed to do that. However, I'm kind of with Christy where I've also created like a script of my talk that I want to be available after the talk for folks. So I have an open, you know, Google document and things like that, 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 so there is like, for me, I'm like, it, there's just going to be some amount of access to these things that's kind of out there that I can't control whether EGU folks were registered or not for the conference for us to access them, you know, just to make them available for folks. So I'm not worried too much about that, but in terms of the actual recordings, yeah, I'm sort of hesitant to post. Wendy, how, how is AMS kind of handling this for their meeting in terms of how people can use the videos or who there's going to be videos going to be available to afterwards? I don't know if there are changes this year, but traditionally recordings of all AMS talks are available to anyone in the world after the meeting is over. They send out links that say, if you weren't able to attend, you can get to all the links. I, it's so hard, right? Because I've been a member since 1982. I don't think you have to be a member even to access recorded talks after the fact. Maybe you do, but I don't think so. I don't, and I haven't heard that it's different because we're using 
this platform this time. I, but it could be for reasons having to do with the platform. I, I'm sorry, the meeting staff, you know, I know what I can other, other people go ahead, but I, I could share. I've been I've been really um, in on this question, so I can share some things okay, that I don't I don't need to talk first. Well, but I mean, I see Emily raising her hand and maybe okay, the Emily, go ahead. Number. Why don't you? Uh, I, mean, I might even be frank there. That's uh, we, I don't you know. Other people speak first. Jim, you can um, pop in and answer that in a minute. I just wanted to say that I'm trying to court like uh, cross promote within AGU because it is tricky to navigate. So if anybody wants to drop their Twitter, I'm using Twitter because that's easier for me. Um, if anybody wants to drop their Twitter handle in the chat bar, then um, I can try to like link up so we can, we can share your, I can share your talks a little more easily. That's all, go ahead. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm on the phone only right now. Um, sorry for being late, but I, I do have a, I, I'll raise my hand verbally and then I'll wait my turn. Well, Jim, you were going to answer the question. So why don't you go ahead and then we'll have Frank weigh in. Okay. Yeah. So um, definitely, first off, definitely this was a big question. How so we prepared our presentation. We did things. Um, I will say that that is, I think people who know me, I'm a big believer in you have informal discussions with people. You kind of talk about things and you talk to people on staff, but you don't put them on the spot. You don't, you know, you kind of feel things out before you to get it. You, you don't get no's, right? You go in and ask. And we have the opportunity to talk to a lot of AGU people so you can kind of feel things out. And I'm doing that. Um, so uh, what my understanding of is they primarily don't, they, they like to be the place that publishes first. Right. A lot of papers come in. They can't, you know, be, it'd be crazy if they say we now own, literally own the papers and nobody else can use them because that actually detracts from the power of AGU. AGU is the first to publish a major paper that come in. I think that's largely where they come from. And they do ease up a little bit on education. But, uh, but part of our approach in making it easy for them to, to not have a problem. And of course, if they do have a problem, we take it down. We apologize, we take it down. But for instance, our video is truly a video and it's made of four different sections with each child, each kid giving a section for it. That's, it's totally easy for me to just re-edit re it. I mean, we can, we we're gonna put them out in individually. We can have the same voiceover, but change the images. I mean, it's, it's like a whole different video, but the same one and we put them out independently. Further in our session, we put a link to a, a, a playlist that allowed us to continue to make videos for AGU during AGU that people can link to. If you go to our section, there's a playlist and there's a lot of videos that we're in the midst of creating. I and mean, we had so many kids doing voiceover that I haven't had time to make all videos for what they're doing, but we want them to get credit for being AGU. Anyway, I'm feeling it out with people. I don't think that runs, it, it respects AGU as, yes, this is where it first came out. It's a great thing, but they want it to live on. I've also been checking YouTube. There are people who are putting some of their presentations on, on YouTube, and so technically they're breaking the rules. Uh, but they're not the big ones, right? I mean, Ben Santer's presentation that you that you and I heard last night, Tamara, that that should be on AGU first. I mean, that's a big deal that that goes on there. Our little stuff, but I'm feeling it out with AGU, and I can report back what I'm seeing, okay? okay. Um, and maybe that's also for, for Frank and Katie. I don't mind ever doing that if it helps you because, you know, it's one thing for Noah to to figure out, like, what are we doing? I mean, that's, you know, you guys have to be really careful. I mean, that's, you know, we make a mistake. We make a mistake. It's not. It's not that big a deal, right? So, okay. Jim, I appreciate. That. I. I also was at Ben's talk last night. It was a wonderful talk, especially that 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 your with his response to your question was epic, um, and that was a really powerful uh, talk. But then specifically that answer. But but my 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 question is is going a slightly different. Um, direction um, and that is the the uh, I mean it's it's I don't know why they scheduled the way they did but it's really not working um, the the posters uh, I was supposed to have a poster chat today uh, nothing I have no idea if anybody interacted with my poster at all zero and you know like how was that supposed to happen um, it's real. I thought that the system would actually support the chat. It looks like it doesn't. If it was, it didn't work. 
and that you're so supposed you, to maybe provide you. So Frank, can I ahead. ask a question? So, so can you describe yeah. how, what your experience was with the post? Cause I haven't gone to a poster session yet, but how, how did you experience it working? Um, so did you, were you with your poster in some, some virtual way? There's no way to be with your poster. The only thing I found that you could possibly do was, um, there's a thing like, when will you be chatting related to your yeah, session? Frank, that's and I how put you're in supposed time. To, yeah, Frank, that's how you're supposed but to do it. So you're supposed to have your own Zoom link. You have to actually create uh, your own space for uh, people to chat with you. It's really ridiculous because they, they didn't really tell us that. And they didn't really make that like super part explicit. That... But yeah, like they just, e I emailed them a week ago asking them about how all this works. And they just emailed me at the end of yesterday and let me know, oh yeah, yeah. that live chat session's for you. Like you put in your own Zoom link. And I was like, oh, Okay. That I would, would have been super one. helpful. No yeah. wonder nobody was in. I was suspicious. Hmm. Yeah, and, that's and, really and, but isn't that a camera. problem for people that might not have access to creating a Zoom link? I mean, not everybody can. Well, you can put whatever you want in there, right? Like you could, I, I can make and as many Google Meet sessions because of the I NOAA see. Enterprise account as I want, right? It doesn't have to be Zoom. It could be whatever. Yeah. I could it put could my cell phone number oh, in I there. See. I just yeah, put the time I was available, but I thought that the system, because there was nothing saying otherwise, would have generated like a in-system chat function like it does when, when Ben Santos talked last night. There was a chat function right. on, during the talk um, that was on the side with question and answer and something else, the abstract. And I was expecting something like that, but um, I just said, I'm available this time. The system picked that up. It put it on the, the agenda and I hit the go live and nothing. I went to my poster. I'm like, oh crap. And I don't think there's any way I can edit what I put in my um, poster now. So, you know, yeah, I mean, you can, it, it you was have, a missed opportunity. Frank, you do, you can, you can edit what's in there until December 31st. So you are still oh, able so to Oh, so I could go back in, person. I could edit the chat now for later today, yeah. uh, because the session goes until 1139. I, I got you. It's, yeah, it's you can ridiculous. set up another time. <laughs> and for folks who don't have access to something like a Google Meet or a Zoom or Teams or anything like that, and do want to do something like this for their poster session, the other thing you can do is um, AGU does have these like pod spaces that you can reserve that would normally be like similar to what they do with the in the in the um, in person space where you can like reserve a pod to meet with people. They were saying that you can also reserve these pods to do these poster chats if you don't have your own link to do that, where they'll give yeah. you a Zoom link or whatever. So Katie, if you don't have your own, HU does have some. Katie, with a, a quick clean specific thing. So since you have graciously organized a poster walkthrough for our posters. I chose not to do an additional, I will be here personally, because that just seemed like overkill. I agree. Yeah. So that's what they told me was, all right. Cool. Yeah. They, they told me was that the poster walk is supposed to be something organized by the session chairs. And, you know, usually they'll have 20 to 40 posters in some of these poster walks. So trying to fit all that into an hour, but since we only have five, I'm thinking we're going to have plenty of time to talk about each of our posters. So I don't think you need to so, schedule. So where, where and when is this poster walk? This is tomorrow. It's um, tomorrow afternoon at um, 1 p.m. Mountain Time, 12 p.m. Pacific, whatever that translates to elsewhere. Um, for the Clean Network um, poster session, the Clean Climate Literacy Initiative Showcase that we do every year, um, we're having our sort of poster walk and then whatever rest of the time we have will be dedicated towards discussion and networking session. Um, and is that, are we using this link to do that or how, how are we? No, that's through the AGU system. Okay, I'll have and, to look at that. I have you as undivided attention and it's today, not tomorrow, panic time. Since I have the calendar invite and the link, I assume when I go to that link, we are live doing our poster walk, yeah? Yay, I love it when things are easy. And, and yeah, you'll just Frank, go to that that link, Wendy, and we'll um, figure out exactly how to share all the posters in there because I'll have to figure that out. But for the most part, I mean, they say we can log in up to 20 minutes in advance, so you can come in early oh. if you want, but for the most part, we'll be. So you yeah. said it's 1 p.m. Mountain Time? 
Correct. Okay. And, and for Frank and, and others on the on the poster, just to see the thing when when we give feedback or we raise there, there's some issues, just to backing up, the, these are not isolated issues by any means. Um, I pour through the posters. I mean, there are thousands of posters, and I go and find the top 100 that I go visit. I was visiting posters right and left, and the people weren't there at the times they were supposed to be. And uh, this, I mean, this thing of they did they know that they were supposed to provide the communication that wasn't clear. I mean, I was sending messages. I got messages back after I left from people because I went through the connection, the email thing. But yeah, post people. I was not able to get people poster live. I don't think I found a, certain, a single poster that I could talk to live. So it was pretty widespread. Yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, I mean, they, they, the they dropped now. this ball. Katie, I'm on the page now with those posters tomorrow. I mean, they're just listed from 7 a.m. to 23:59. Right. So if okay. So it's how do separate, I get to? Anything, it's a separate right? session, and I I don't have the link right off on my. Um, computer right now, but I did send it. I sent it in that email I sent yesterday, the clean network that lists all the things going on for AGU and clean. And one is of that the, things, the Google doc you sent the link to, to just before? It is also in the Google doc. So if you look at tomorrow at one o'clock, that's a good point. I could grab it from that doc because I do have that open, don't I? No, I don't have that open anymore. And, and Katie, in that doc, is the the workshop, which is a two hour, now we're down to two hours next Tuesday. I remember right um is that i can't find that in the agu system i've yeah, tried it's, it's under agu events it's in a weird spot but there Good is Lord. a link to it and it is in that document okay so okay. yeah i see We're, i think we probably have to promote that okay so katie i see poster walk and networking session is scheduled for 12 to 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 one what time zones are all of these in does it it says at the top, they're all in Pacific because that's what AGU system is in if you're not okay. logged in. So, all right, we were okay. going off Specific of that. that. Okay, well, I have the link here in this Google Doc you said, so that, that works. Yeah, so you see the poster session summaries had to be scheduled separately. So they're, um, they're separate in the AGU system. But if you went to that poster session, the original one, like if you just found our poster session in AGU, there is a little thing that says, join the poster walk. And it doesn't say what time, but there's a link then to the other poster you. summary session. I didn't see it the first time, but I do see it now, poster walk. It's really stupid and confusing. <laughs> it's just like not yes, the best way to do this. But... Um, I, I saw the chat asking about the clean workshop and and I heard you mention it, Frank, and that we need to promote it. And I just want to add that even though I'm cherry picking my AGU experience, it turns out that the gift teacher workshop and the clean workshop overlap an hour. Each of them are two hours and they have a shared hour. So I haven't quite <laughs> figured out that yet. So Frank, when is it's the workshop? It. I actually had I always have trouble finding these workshops. Yes, yeah, so that's also yeah. linked in that document. It's Tuesday evening for East Coast folks. It's like late afternoon for like, Pacific time. Yeah. Tuesday, that's next week? Mm -hmm, Tuesday the mm -hmm. 15th. And then yeah. I think it's 6 p.m. Who's, facil who's facilitating that? We are. <laughs> so technically, Frank, Anna, and I are the facilitators in terms of who AGU will recognize to like be a host in Zoom. We can only have three people. Yep. So um, Frank, Anna and I submitted this and that's who they um, put down as facilitators. But we have some other folks helping out with this okay. as well. And some yep. um, folks help Frank put the slides together and things like that. So Frank, okay. I'll let you talk yep. about that. Yeah, but it, it's 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern. Yeah. Um, which, I mean, some of the times uh, that they've given us are pretty wonky. Um, I'm not going to talk about next Friday, uh, this Friday at 11.30 p.m., just saying, uh, Eastern. Um, but the, the, the workshop is, you, we've done this for years, the workshop is down to two hours in the new system. And um, it's, uh, so again, from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern time, so the dogs have found me. Um, 
And, uh, you know, we're just, we're looking at some of the, the practices that are related to the ACE work we're doing. So we're just having discussions, breakout discussions about some of the, the effective practices that are out there that relate to what we could do in a strategy. Um, it's similar to some of the other work we've done over the past couple of years, going back to San, uh, New Orleans. Brian, uh, you, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, Frank, can you name again what time and, and which session number that ends up being? Uh, I don't know the session, um, but it is um, uh, at 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern time. Sorry to mess, keep on missing with everybody's time zones um, on Tuesday the 15th is what I have it as. Okay, well, if you need help, just shout on that one. Uh, I think the, the main thing is, I mean, this is an opportunity. Who knows who's going to, I mean, finding it, I have no idea who's going to be there. Um, it is a question that I've been thinking about for the past couple of days about um, who is going to end up with us. But I think that it is an opportunity for a lot of the members of the clean community. So maybe Katie, you and I, or, or you and me and Anna can spend some time trying to talk about this, how to promote this within the network, at least. I don't know if historically workshops you could access if you were not registered. On, uh, Katie, no, you do you know if that anything. is still true? You, can't well, you cannot access it if you're not registered. That's what Pranoti told us, that this is... Normally, we'd be able to open this to folks because we can get the wristbands and such, but she said in the virtual space that you had to be registered for at least one day of the conference and that we couldn't otherwise open it up. There you uh, go. So that's it. That's an answer. The answers are good. I don't like the answer, but it doesn't mean it's a, it's, it is an answer. So, uh, but we also so making do know sure that, that there they... are ways to get free registration for folks, you know, through like K through 12 and informal educators can get free registration. Um, there was also right. um, some ways of getting indigenous partners uh, free registration this year if they were connected to some organizations like tribal colleges or elder organizations mm -hmm. or something like that within the tribes. And then um, there were some other, you know, some student prices ended up kind of free or really reduced this year and other things like that. So not everyone, but there were ways to get free registration this year. I actually tried and I was not able to even find it online this year. Like I could not get free. I've always gotten free registration, <laughs> but I- Oh, couldn't... Jen, you should have emailed them because I had trouble with the system this year too. Last year was really easy and I sailed through, but this year I had to email them and they had to like change my status somewhere to be K through 12 educator. Right. Well, I, I can, I'll go back to them and email them. It just was like, I was at a point where like I had to get on and I just couldn't like, anyway, yeah, it was a scheduling thing on my end. So I, I thank you. I, I will email them because I really could not. And, and, and to back, back up again, uh, this is not an isolated problem. Uh, everybody knows who Natalie Stapert is at little school. She's a, she's a AGU member and she she went after October 30, 30th when they had that, the, which is the time that they went from cheap to, you know, cheap to other thing, but for educators supposed to be zero no matter what. And they wouldn't let her um, uh, register because because she found some fine print somewhere that says, well, after October 30th, we're not supposed to. But, she, you know, she's already a member and things. Anyway, I mean, right now we're wondering whether it's worth the trouble to get her registered or not or just – you know, we have our ways uh, of, um, of of sharing. But yeah, we we have another major educator who just who so far has not been able to register, even though she's a member of AGU and a K twelve teacher. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I think we need to feel safe to vent on the challenges of navigating a meeting of this size, and it is painful, and not to pile on, but just to sh sort of share in sympathy. We coordinated an AMS digital booth to be a part of the AGU meeting. We uploaded it, we met all the deadlines. We didn't see it last week. So we emailed saying all that work we did, can't find it, is it showing up next week during the main week? Still haven't heard anything back, but our AMS digital booth doesn't exist anywhere. So I mean, <laughs> everyone's doing their best and it's, pandemic conference. Well, 
No, I also, by the way, I, I don't think anything we're talking about here is attacking AGU or being you know, really critical. It's really hard. And certainly, I mean, when I'm talking with them, I'm making it really clear. I'm, I'm very grateful what they're doing. And they want to hear the flaws, right? I mean, you know, we all want to hear if our zipper's down, right? You know, you don't want to walk around with your zipper down. You want to, your friend tells you, hey, you know, you might want to touch, you might want to move that up there, there a little bit there. Okay, good. There you go. So, I mean, I don't think bringing these problems up is, especially if it's said in a friendly way, like all of us tend to be. I, I, I mean, I don't think we're talking about AGU as, you know, no. bad people. Not at all. No, no, not at all. But uh, um, uh, Marshall Shepard wrote a piece in Forbes about virtual conferences that was really quite interesting. You, you should check it out. Because one of the things he's been raising is the community has been talking about, let's go virtual or have a virtual function for a very long time for non-COVID related issues. And so now we have COVID, we're in virtual, and there's some real issues. Um, now, obviously, when, you know, HU had a long time to get here. It wasn't like it popped like NSTA, it just popped in front of them. But um, it's, 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 there are some limitations that I think they'll never get past. Um, there are some advantages that um, probably will persist. But um, I, I'm, Jim, I, I agree with you that it would be good for all of us, including AMS, Aztec, NAAAE. You know, there, we have a circuit um, and different experiences and different conferences. And I think it would be good if the field kind of understood, like, wow, that really worked. And that was an advantage. Or, ooh, that didn't really work. Um, let's think about that again. I don't know where they, if they're going to ask us questions. You, you weren't on at the beginning, Frank, but I made a pitch that the AMS annual is actually taking a pretty different approach from AGU instead of trying to make everything happen in 20 hour days. It's really, really hyper focused and focused on interaction. And so uh, we Marshall's article came out while we were having an all hands meeting about throwing the annual meeting in virtual space. And the immediate response was the good news is we're doing three of the four things he, he recommends. So yay. Right. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. I appreciate that. Um, Deb raised her hand before we only have a couple minutes left. So I wanted to make sure she gets it. Yeah. And I, I just wanted to add on to what Frank was saying. So one of the areas in sort of learning sciences work, ironically, like five years ago, I participated in some virtual professional learning work um, that was building on a series of sort of efforts over the last 10 years. Um, and like there's, there's just so many challenges working with educators, specifically in the space at that time. Um, and technology has advanced just like in leaps and bounds again. Um, but it's just a really interesting space because there's actually not a lot of research about like what makes an effective um, virtual learning or professional learning setting yet. Um, and I kind of think that's the silver lining this year that we're gonna see a ton of different things come out and advances made in that space. So going forward should be much better. Emily, I, was your hand up also, or was that from earlier? That's what I thought it was from earlier. Sorry, I'll take that down. Oh, but, uh, actually, Katie, I do have one thought that I was thinking, can I just pop in one sec as long as we're on me? Okay, so there was, um, I just saw something about the, the ACE coalition work in the chat. Um, and I was wondering if there's any requests for how or where to promote that within the AGU space to um, support that work. Yeah, I think that's what Frank was trying to talk about. Um, I don't know, Frank, do you think that someone, I mean, just because you're more involved with the ACE work and such, is there someone over in ACE that could put together some sort of a like email or flyer or something that could be shared around easily? I, you know, I put it in my email with the various AGU things that are happening to clean, which I also sent to a couple other email lists that I'm on that it's relevant for. But um, I'm thinking, you know, if we want to advertise this specifically, it might be nice to have something that's really specific to this. Um, I don't know if somebody over there sure. can you can see if Sassy will create like a little Twitter card or something that we can circulate on our various Twitter feed and tag page. Yeah. That's what I'd recommend. Yeah. And this is, sorry, my son pulled me aside for a second. Um, uh, uh, is this related to the workshop? I would say so, yeah. 
Yeah. So, so if it's related to the workshop, I agree that we do need to, to, cause it's, it's buried. I it, thank you, Katie, for telling me where it was. I, I missed it and I looked really hard. So, we'll take it. um, yeah. chances. Sorry. So I put it in the chat, but, but we are going to have to, we are going to have to, to, but it's only specific to AGU people attending the AGU meeting. So we probably should do a little bit of social media to connect the AGU, you know, uh, fall meeting hashtag with this because that's who needs to see it. So yeah. what's um, that hashtag? Yeah. It, yeah, I, I don't, this may be too much too, too, too late, but I will just say that I'm totally willing to support it. And I know Lowell would too, others, if, Katie, like if there's a that there is a central place where the clean resources are, or the you know, things that are going on at AGU, that we each can be promoting that as we talk about things. I mean, I for one, I'm in a lot of sessions, and I'll bring something up, and then people want to know what's your session. You have a session here. You have middle school students here. Well, I would like to be able to not only promote what climate change education at org does in our little subsection, but the whole of clean. And, if, and then, you know, and by the way, there's a thing on national strategy and things like that. If there's a central place to do that, I can say I have the opportunity to do that in a lot of sessions. I'd be glad to do it off our Twitter account. AGU is paying attention to our Twitter account. They, they're giving us likes and re thinks and things. I mean, they like what we're doing. So, I mean, I, Katie, I mean it. I want to make sure clean is seen we would not be at AGU if it wasn't for you guys, okay? That's, you got to yeah. give credit for credit, too. Thanks, so Jim. That's a really good is, point, is, too. Is, and the clean, you know, I'll just retype in the clean Twitter for folks in case you want to help us out um, promoting through that. Um, yeah, I think that's a great idea. Help us. We'll send an email out uh, with the ACE workshop stuff and then um, follow us on social media and we'll try to keep sharing stuff. So, but I know we're a little over time, so sorry. And thanks everyone for joining. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks, Katie. Enjoy Thank the you. rest of the meeting. Thanks, Tamara. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Be well. Thanks all.